you're just putting on. Coming out on it. Hello and welcome everyone. We're just getting set up for the Cosmic Oracle Show. We just have one minute and then we have a, on our show today, we have Kelly Lapsaritis. So I'm really excited to have her as a guest and she's a good friend as well. So that's always helpful. So we are going live in just one minute. So I'm going to uh, bring us over to uh, Revolution Radio right now. We're also not only live on Facebook, but live on Revolution Radio as well. And uh, so we're going to do that now. Sponsor Jean Lindsay is an internationally acclaimed psychic, author, and founder of the online mystery school, Esoteric. As the cosmic oracle, she is a conduit to the powers that be to answer your questions about your future self, past lives, current fears, love. She shines light into the darkness to illuminate what was. What may be and be The readings and advice given by Robert G. Lindsay are for entertainment purposes only. Should not take the place of any medical, legal, or financial advice given to you by qualified professionals and are not a substitute for medical, legal, or financial advice. If you need a doctor, call a doctor. If you need to be expanded, Hello and welcome everyone. This is your host, Barbara Jean Lindsay, and you're going to be listening to the Cosmic Oracle Show for the next two hours. We're live on Revolution Radio and on Facebook as well on the Cosmic Oracle Show on Facebook. And so uh, I'm really excited about our guest that we have this evening. She's a wonderful friend, a dear friend, talented, amazing woman. 
will be introducing her shortly uh, on the show. And before we do, I do want to thank you for tuning in to Revolution Radio. This is my sixth year uh, doing this show every week. And so I'm really honored to still be a part of the Revolution Radio family. And we're here uh, all as volunteers. It's an all volunteer station. And what that means is that uh, we're only here through your donations. So the way you can do that, no one gets paid anything. And so uh, your contributions would go 100% directly to the station. And how you keep us on the air is you go to Freedom Slips, that's F-R-E-E-D-O-M, S is in Sam, L-I-P is in Paul, S is in Sam.com, and hit that donate button, $5, $10, whatever you can give. Uh, we really appreciate it and want to thank you in advance. I also want to thank all my listeners over the years and uh, all of my clients. I do do uh, readings as well. I've been doing psychic readings for 30 years. It's something that I love to do and you can contact me on Facebook and set up a reading with me. Also uh, support my work by reading my books. Uh, Dying for the Light um, is about my near-death experience. And I wrote a small little brochure, the white light meditation. It's a meditation that I received when I was in the NDE experience. And then my latest book is Seized by Sekhmet, an Egyptian goddess revolution. Uh, and these are all three available on uh, Amazon at this time. So thank you for uh, supporting me and supporting my work and supporting our station. And so I would like to tell you a little bit about Kelly Rainbow Butterfly. She is a rainbow Reiki practitioner and a group coordinator at the Oak Street Artesian Market. She's a facilitator at Intenders of the Highest Good. She lives in Colville, Washington. She works at Kelly Rainbow Butterfly Publications. She's the chief executive officer and founder at Children of Earth Coalition. She's the host and director at Sasquatch Family Reunion. And she is the founder of the Tri-County Autism and Disabilities Support and Advocacy Group at Tri-County Autism and Developmental Disabilities Support and Advocacy Group. She's a studied ordained minister at Universal Life Church Ministries and she also is a study doctor at Metaphysics at Universal Life Church Ministries. So uh, how I met, uh, how did I meet you, Kelly? Welcome to the show, Kelly. Uh, Thank you. Hey, hey. Oh, wait, how, when did we meet first? Was it through the Sasquatch reunion? Do you remember? That's when we first met, yes, like in person, but as far as how we connected, I don't know. Like, I think we just always were. So, <laughs> um, I think you you asked me to be on your show years ago or something. Yeah, and so we connected, then you, you came um, to the first reunion in 2018, I think. Is that right? Yeah, I think I was, I, I remember uh, I was supposed to come and speak, and then my brother passed away two days before. And so that's right. Yeah. That's right. So, the year prior. Yeah. So I think two night 2019 was my first year there, I think. I don't remember. Okay. Is that terrible? We both are probably after you do this for a while, right? You just kind of I know it. Kind they of, kind of blend together, timelines merge, all that. <laughs> it's true. It's true. So um let's let's I want to talk mainly about your experiences with the Sasquatch because a part of the Cosmic Oracle show is everyone talks, uh, tells their extraordinary experiences. And I know you've had so many and I know you've probably talked about them a lot. And I would like to start off maybe with one that comes to mind with you. And then after that, I would like to uh, talk about your books and, and we're gonna just take this beautiful weave because you're such a multi-dimensional being that you have so much energy and so many things that you like to uh, put your energy into that I wanna make sure that we get a chance in these next two hours to kind of talk about all these projects that you feel uh, very passionate and compassionate about 
uh, uh, manifesting here and keeping it uh, in this third dimension. Yes, thank you. Mm -hmm. So what do you think would be one that comes to mind? What would be one of your... Uh... A Sasquatch story? Yeah, yeah. Oh my goodness. So there's like, it's just an ongoing thing, but I, I think one of the, the best stories that a lot of people can relate to or that they really during for me in the past when I met George, I guy George, um, and that was in 2000. Uh, February 2013, when I lived in Arkansas. And um, I had just recently, I, I guess what you would call a, a quickening, you know, really just overnight, um, I, I had a, an unbelievable experience where I was changed, you know, the next day I was visited by um, E.T., and a Sasquatch at the same time, and they performed some kind of thing on me. I thought at the time it was an egg extraction. Uh, anyway, it was a benevolent um, event that happened, but it was just, it rocked my world and it changed my perspective of everything. Uh, and I really came into like a, a really deep, clear spiritual knowing, um, you know, fairly suddenly. So, um, and not only because of that event, but because of so many other surrounding events right around that time. And so that happened in December, 2012. Um, and so just very there in February, 2013 um, is when um, I met my Sasquatch guy, George, for the first time. And there was a place uh, in my neighborhood that was undeveloped land. It was you know, some acreage, anyway, there, there was um, a creek, uh, often a dry creek, especially in the summer that ran through it, um, and just lots of trees. It was a nice space for me to go to kind of get into the woods that was only a few blocks away. And, um, and I was seeing all kinds of Sasquatch signs in there too. There were like wigwam stick structures that were built um, there was all kinds of glyphs to be found. Um, and also I was just really kind of deeply connecting with nature and going out and talking with the Sasquatch because this was a new connection to me. And I, I really wanted to develop my, my uh, relationship with the Sasquatch. Um, and so I, I went out there this one day, it was early February and, um, I was just having a very, um, I guess to say I was like in a, a deep meditation state, um, just felt really connected with nature and everything. Uh, you know, I was giving thanks and I found the stand of, of trees, uh, four different uh, trees where you could stand right in the middle of, of them. And so I was just really drawn to go stand in there. Um, and I was meditating and I ended up singing the song Hallelujah by Leonard Cohen. Mm -hmm. And while I was in the middle of that song, I had my eyes closed and I'm singing that. And a Sasquatch is coming to me in my mind's eye, but it was so clear. It was just as clear as if my eyes were open and this, you know, was really happening, but maybe clearer, <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. and, um, so he was approaching me with this gentle face and this gentle smile, um, you know, and he, I could tell that he really um, liked what I was singing. He liked my energy. He had a curiosity. Um, anyway, so as he's approaching, I felt, I, I was grateful. I, I knew that this was the connection I've been looking for and waiting for, and that, you know, it's certainly not some kind of instance of, you know, Sasquatch attacking, like, you know, there was so many, so many stories going around and everything. Not that I had my doubts, but it was just like, no, this is what a beautiful experience this is. And uh, so I finished singing the song mm -hmm. as I kind of telepathically was connecting with him. It was still a, it was a, it was a feel out. It's really hard to describe what that energy was, but it was just an observation of each other while I was still singing. 
And then once I ended, uh, he ended up right in front of my face. Just I could see every detail, every wrinkle of his face, every it, it was so detailed. And um, and he said that he liked my song. He said, I, I like I liked your song. And he introduced himself as George. And it was so uh, for me, it it was like a long time connection. He felt like my brother, no kind of, you know, the kind of anxiety that you would have meeting a Sasquatch, you know, it, usually there would be some kind of fear there or some kind of like, oh my God, it's happening, it's happening. There was none of that. It was just like reconnecting with an old friend. And, um, you know, he, and I, I was curious about his name, you know, I said, George, you know, usually I hear kind of like exotic names associated with the Sasquatch um, more than anything. And, and he goes, yeah, my mother liked the name. And I'm like, okay, yeah, that, that makes sense to me. And, um, but really George, you know, geo means um, like of the earth. So it's really quite an appropriate name for Sasquatch. And um, yes. So uh, anyhow, it, it was a really beautiful connection that we made. And, and looking further into the woods, um, he asked me to follow him. And I should, I should back up and say that um, at this time that I was visiting, um, I was actually, my son was still a baby and um, not even yet two years old. He was 18 months or something like that. And so anyway, he was at home taking a nap when I took this walk. And so I knew he took long naps. I, I knew I was good to take a you know short little walk and, and come back. Um, and the, there were, the kids were at home, teenagers and everything. So anyway, but I was like, no, I really need to go back. I knew I was on a, a time restriction here. And so he asked me um, to follow him into this portal area. And it's an area that I was observing. And it's actually the direction of which he came and approached me. And he wanted to go back and show and show me this. And, um, you know, I, I didn't my my mother mama bear instincts kicked in, you know, whatever. And I was like, I really don't feel comfortable walking through a portal right now while my baby is sleeping at home. And, um, you know, so I, I didn't go and, but I explained that situation to him and I said, would you come with me? And so he did. And he, he followed me home. He walked me, you know, the whatever two, three blocks home that it was. And, um, so, Anyway, we, and the whole time he kind of walked just immediately behind me. And I felt, you know, as if he was like protecting me, even though, you know, I, I was safe, but we had a telepathic conversation the whole time, um, you know, and the, the different silly things that we talked about. He's, he's very jovial. He's very, um, he and I are just really aligned even with our, our sense of humor. Um, him being a Sasquatch, there's some things that he doesn't understand, but surprisingly, a lot of things that he does understand. Um, I, I joked about him too, and he said his name was George. And, um, and I said something to the effect of, oh, where's, where's John and Paul and Ringo? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and he had no idea what I was talking about. So I had to explain that. Okay. Yeah. And, um, you know, but, but other things, um, you know, as amazing he gets and he has, a, a, he's kind of a trickster. He likes to hide things a lot, cool little pranks, which are innocent. Sometimes at the time they can be really frustrating when you're trying to find something that you know was there, um, you know, or, or something like that. But uh, for the most part, no, it's just it's innocent little jokes and pranks that that he enjoys. Um, and he said that he's been there since the moment of my birth. Mm -hmm. I asked him how old he was. Uh, at the time that this happened, I was 32 going on 33 
Um, and so he told me that he was about the same age. I don't know if he said a, a year old or maybe, I think he said he was 34 at the time, 34. Um, but I didn't understand if that meant the same as human years, you know, or is that kind of a perspective? Like that's how old he would be for his, you know, if they live to be 500 is, is 34, like a quarter of the way through their life or, you know, how does that work? Um, so, uh, but he, no, he explained that he was there since the moment of my birth. He, he told me how, um, like one time I put on the movie, The Sound of Music, and I haven't watched that in a long time. And when I was a kid, I watched it all the time as, as a child. And uh, so when it came on and I was kind of singing along to the song and he started singing too. And I was like, how do you know the sound of music? Like, what the heck? You didn't know the Beatles, but you know the sound of music. Are you there? Oh, computer just cut off. Okay. Um, anyway. Um, but he said, well, because I've been with you since your birth, he goes, I, I remember singing and dancing to this with you as a kid. And I'm like, wow, you know, so as a child, I had no idea that he was there, but at the same time, it resonated to be true because I felt, I felt a presence. I felt a, a brother that I didn't feel really like an only child, I, you know, um, uh, even though I was grow up but I anyway I felt uh, very comforted by I guess invisible friends and family and I, I didn't know how to um, put that into perspective at the time but um, so that you know that's a, a great connection and I'm still very connected with George I can feel him all the time uh, even when he's like not around, all I have to do really is call on him or think about him. He's just there. He's a, a part of me and my consciousness, um, you know, truly like a, a brother. And Sunni is the same way. Sunni is a, a, a grandmother kind of elder. She's a Sasquatch, but a very much different personality, very much like a grandmother or mother, you know, um, uh, comforting. And she gives so much wisdom um and she's also a part of me she's um in part another car carnation incarnation but she's um you know a soul aspect of myself and so even though i'm calling her sunni or identifying her as a kind of thing that is how she presents herself as a sasquatch but she's really just a part of me and so you can um you know tap into your inner knowing at any time and and I'm connected with them, you know, whereas many other Sasquatch kind of come and go for different reasons. Uh, those two, you know, I, I guess you'd call them my guides. They're, you know, a part of me. Uh, and so this happened like nine years ago and it's like, it just happened yesterday, right? Like- I know, yeah. And it's, it's such a, um, a change in your expansion of consciousness, right? Yeah, you got the big, you got the big cahoon all at once, you know, and then you had to deal with it and acclimate with it. And, and how could you talk about people who, who just have their first experiences and the best way for them to acclimate this? How did, how, how did you help yourself acclimate that you, that this truly was happening and that you did have an established relationship with them? Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, you know, everybody's journey is very different. Um, uh, so many people talk to me, um, you know, they, they find me either by an internet search or recommended or somehow, you know, they're, they're just drawn because they know that I would be able to help them or understand or put things into perspective. And what I've learned is that everybody's experiences and initial contact or the way that they perceive them even is so very different. And so, um, you know, I can really just share um, my perspective of things. 
Um, and I know that a lot of people also struggle. So when I learned about um, who the Sasquatch were, uh, you know, truly, it was, you know, in 2012, when everything was really opening up to me, I, I was also doing a lot of ancestral research, and I was very immersed in the Native American culture in Arkansas. I was, you know, attending several powwows, and I was um, learning from um, a, a Chinupa carrier, learning, you know, many different ways. Um, so anyway, I was very immersed in that, which follows very much a lot of the, the teachings or the energies of the tribal Sasquatch. And so, um, you know, I came across the information that they're sentient beings and that they, you know, were our people and that they were here before humans and that, um, you know, they're part um, connected with the stars, part connected with the earth, you know, as we are and things like that, and that they have uh, these gifts and abilities that they do. Um, I just knew that that was a part of me somehow, my reality, that was a part of my truth. And that was a big part of why I was here. I just knew it. It was an overwhelming. And I think um, that's what caused, you know, more or less than anything. I think that is what, what caused or was the catalyst of the quickening was that I, I found who I was. I came into the, the truth and the information that I'd been looking for my whole life and I didn't even know it. And so that went up a lot for me. And um, uh, what was the question? I forgot. <laughs> uh, I don't remember. I'm right with you. <laughs> oh, advice. Oh, advice for others. Yeah. Advice for others. So, so for me, um, the reason that, you know, it really opened up so greatly for me and the communication and the contact really started and it was obvious and I had the uh, telepathic communication and, um, you know, different psychic gifts and things like that. A lot of that is because it's me. It's my mission. It's a part of who I am and what I'm here to do. Um, you know, if you look at my astrological chart and, and can read it, I can pinpoint for you exactly what it means and, um, you know, why I would have such an experience. And that can also be a perspective of why some others don't. Some people really uh, seek to connect on a level that I or others may, and they're like, oh, well, I just can't. But um, you know, there's nothing wrong with that. There's, there's, we're all here for higher purpose, and it's not all to connect with multi-dimensional beings. We are all multi-dimensional beings, and we're connecting with multi-dimensional beings all the time, anyway. Even without your awareness, look at your dream time. You know, you're doing it then. So um, it's something that we're all doing, but some people just have. Um, a different awareness of it, or they have a different process, or, I mean, there's certainly a lot of things that somebody can do um, to open themselves up psychically, you know, eating clean, living clean, you know, um, using good products that aren't going to affect your pineal gland or your health in certain ways. And, you know, so all of that's good and fine. Get your, your sunshine and your water and your exercise and all that good stuff. Um, and those are all very important parts and all vital um, in, in having holistic health and having balance in, in spirit, mind and body. Um, you know, but as far as somebody that is just on a beginning journey with being with that, um, I, the best I can really advise is to be in your heart with things. Um, it, it's really natural to have um, a, a fear, I guess, I think when you're approaching the idea because it's the unknown, you know, I mean, we just naturally we we fear what we don't know um you know so working on that and um you know being in gratitude and 
um, wanting to connect with them. I mean, the, the more that you work on yourself, the more you're going to connect with your divine nature. And um, that's the more you're going to connect with divine beings is when you are in a divine space. So the more that, that um, you can do, and it's not a, it's not a, a goal. It's just, it's life, it's the journey, it's the experience. So I, a lot of people also think they have to do so much to stay on track and to stay spiritual. And oh, I've got to do this, you know, uh, ritual and things like that. That's not wrong with rituals, ceremonies and, and things like that. But um, don't feel like you have to. It's just, it's life and we're meant to, enjoy it and we're meant to make mistakes and you know all of that so uh it's all a part of the journey and so however it you connect with the sasquatch or with other beings that's also just a part of the learning journey um the the deeper you go into yeah your own inner standing and knowing of self the more you'll know them Right. And then so I liked your words, divine nature. I like that. So it's our, our divine nature. And then there's also, let's take it apart, divinity and nature. And yeah. there's such a part that the Sasquatch, for me, helped with, uh, and so did the First Nations in helping develop a real relationship with nature. You know, and, and I, and you're a bridge of that between Sasquatch and nature. There's that Sasquatch and humanity, right? And so, yes. and I see you, you were, you know, when you first had that first experience, did you ever think in nine years that you have how many retreats now under your belt? And you're really no. the spokesperson uh, for the Sasquatch. You're, and we've talked about this in the last show and you've come such a long way since then as well. Um, really standing in your power of who you are, why you're here, and representing the Sasquatch. Would you consider yourself an ambassador, or or what would you for Sasquatch? Or yeah, I would say ambassador. They've they've used the same word, the Sasquatch have, um, and I'm certainly am. I feel very blessed with the opportunity and the skills to be able to you know, gather the tribes, the human and the Sasquatch ones, and to, um, you know, be able to disseminate this information just with the, the, the gifts of being able to, to edit and publish and things like that. So, um, but I'm certainly not alone in this. It's not a, a lone endeavor. Um, you know, because we're putting information out there. It's each and every one of us, it's each piece of consciousness that contributes to those, you know, I don't know if you want to call it ideals or truths, whatever it is, but the more souls that connect um, with that awareness and that truth is all a part of it, you know, um, truly. So, you know, yeah, like I, I've, I've organized some wonderful retreats and reunions and they've been great and successful but you know what and not a single one of them would have been if people didn't show up exactly. so it's exactly. all of us it's every single one of us yeah and so and you're part of yeah so um is holding that sacred space for people to come to a safe place to explore their relationship with sasquatch yes Yes, indeed. I, I agree with that. And it's, um, you know, it's, it's sharing their truth. It's allowing others to share. It's opening that space to uh, invite these realms to, yeah, interact with each other in a, a safe space and um, in a non-judgmental space. And as you know, it's a heck of a lot of fun too. And, you know, and there's some great workshops and play shops. I mean, um, more so than it is information that you learn, which you do. I mean, there's some, the most amazing topics discussed and some of the, you know, I mean, 
just great. Every every single one of them are wonderful information to um, you know attend and be a part of, or you know even the the singing and the dancing is just so much more energy than what we could create alone doing that in our living room, you know. Okay. So um, the the whole experience of getting together like that with like minded, like hearted people, I should say, it's, it's really soul family. And um, every single person that's attended, I, I would say has to agree. It's family. That's why it, it went from a conference to a retreat to the Sasquatch family reunion, because that's what it really is. It, it feels like that when you say that there's something that it just has a nice flow to it, doesn't it? <laughs> the family reunion. Mm -hmm. And I know when I first attended the first one and you usually start out with this big, beautiful circle. And I love that where each person is honored that they bring something to the, to, to the conference just by showing up and being there and, and bringing their heart open and, and, and the Sasquatch were there. Yes. It was really apparent. I mean, you can't, you know, yes. you can't say they weren't there because they it, definitely show up. Yes, yes, they certainly do. And they helped make it happen no matter, you know, what the cost, especially last year, um, you know, when we had all the threats of being shut down and uh, three different locations fell through that we were supposed to have it at you know, and, uh, and I was just like, no, no, I, I know this is supposed to happen. I kept feeling the push from them, but it wasn't actually, I shouldn't even say it was a push. It was just a very simple matter of fact. It's happening. It's happening. We're gathering. We're having the Sasquatch family reunion. There's no way to stop it. And so, um, you know, it all came together beautifully and, and it happened, you know, uh, I even remember because I had to reserve campsites to do it was reservation, which worked out perfect because if you don't make a reservation, you can't exactly make the plans and guarantee that it's going to happen. So, um, you know, but uh, right, right before that button, I had, you know, some friends just kind of you know, giving me their little wisdom. Now, are you sure? It really kind of seems like the universe is closing a lot of doors on you and everything. And I just want to be sure that, you know, this is what you really want to do. And I was just like, um, yes, confirm, hit the button. <laughs> so just without any hesitation, I was like, yes, this is the opportunity. Now, there we go. We'll make that happen. So, um, and, and there it was. And again, this year, I mean, we're still, what is that? It was a big challenge last year. And you, it was. I have to say you were beautifully, you beautifully orchestrated it because you could have, you have so many different choices and so much pressure and you just went with your connection and what I would say with spirit says with Sasquatch. And when you hit that button, that's when everything then began to create itself, right? Yes. Yes, exactly. So it's a trust. And you have developed that trust with the Sasquatch over these years. Yes. Yeah, it has been. And there's been a lot of, you know, that that's like the um, smallest example <laughs> of some of the leaps of faith that I've taken right. with the guidance of the Sasquatch. Mm -hmm. I've made some life changes and choices that would probably seem really illogical or irrational or whatever to a lot of people trying to think of things in a, you know, in a, a practical sort of, you know, thinking of those staples like m money and, you know, things like that. And uh, it was, it's just like, no, I've, I have to learn to trust. I, I do trust. And it's not just the Sasquatch. I trust myself. I trust God. I trust the universe. There's no way. Um, I just know that there's no way that I could ever end up in, um, you know, some undesirable situation. I mean, life happens, of course, but, 
you know, for example, living on the streets or something like that, that that's not going to happen because I trust it won't. I, I trust that, you know, the opportunities are going to come and that everything is going to be taken care of and, you know, all, all of these different things. So, um, and that's how I've been really kind of playing the game of life, especially since I connected with the Sasquatch. I feel a strong guidance. Um, I also get a lot of guidance through dreams. Like I'll have a lot of dreams that are premonitions. Um, they're, they're, well, yeah, premonitions, they're predictions, they're um, real time things that happen often years ahead of time. And so I just follow those dreams. They're so powerful to me, so distinct and clear that I know it's a goal for me to work towards. Mm -hmm. I actually dreamed of these reunions long, long before I had any clue that I would be hosting them. I, that wasn't on my radar at all, but I was dreaming of it. And we were singing Kumbaya, <laughs> which we haven't done yet. So I think this year, I think we should just, Go you know, <laughs> yeah, I think we should just break into a Kumbaya, just make my dreams come true, right? But <laughs> Exactly. But I, I think, too, when you think of a conference, it's not so much getting, it is important to get the information, right? But also it's that fun and play and joy part as well. And I really really adore all the children out here Sasquatch and that they're honored and respected and their voices heard as well and yeah I just think that's really beautiful I still miss the children from last year I've been getting little presents for them uh all year to give to Aww. them <laughs> so I'm well they'll be there again this year yeah. yeah yeah and hopefully some extras yeah and so when is your re, your uh, Sasquatch family reunion held this year? Where and how can people um, buy tickets or if tickets are available or how it all works? It is um, going to be May 11th through May 31st uh, this year in Kettle Falls, Washington. It's actually at the Kettle Falls campground. Um, but we have reserved the spots. And so um, you can buy tickets. You don't need to, to reserve uh, the spots because we've already booked them up and everything like that. And it'll basically be first come, first serve, except for RVs. I'll have to put RVs in particular places to, to be sure they fit. Um, but uh, otherwise, uh, you can get your tickets at www sasquatchfamilyreunion.com oh look i got I got my little flyer here i'll show oh, you that's good. and um here we go yeah yeah let's show it there we go and i'm having there we go it's hard to center when everything's backwards so um yeah so you're you can get your tickets there and um they are actually on sale right now until the end of march so april 1st uh they go back to regular price so if you're considering coming then go ahead and get your tickets now and uh well i mean anytime but if you want to save a few bucks get them now so there is um tent and rv camping um it is it's a camp out it's at a campground there is no uh, electricity at the sites, but there are restrooms that have electricity in them. They have flushing toilets and they've got running water in the, in the sinks. And there's a couple electrical outlets, um, in the restroom, but at the sites there is not. So I just like to warn people of that. Um, you know, there's charcoal grills and, um, we'll, we'll be making some food too, um and anyway it's a it's a nice little space there's an amphitheater there so we'll have um like three different locations that will be having workshops um going on at the same time like three different workshops happening for people to choose from because um once again this year i was blessed with a really fabulous lineup of presenters and so you know we just have to everybody's got to have their chances so um yeah, and 
what what else and then yeah so we do you know ceremonies and meditations um as well as the the workshops and presentations and every evening there's there's usually drum circles um or something like that happening and this year we will have um a a place that's more you know kind of designated for the kids there's a couple swings there um and it'll be a place where we'll, we'll have a few kids classes as well barbara you said that you'll do a couple yeah. classes and christian um as well and then maybe you know anybody else i i haven't really said anything anything but i i would imagine you know other parents um have something going on so i'm still working on that piece but yeah since the kid community is growing we're going to have more kid workshops <laughs> <laughs> So I really recommend it, um, that you go to um, go to family sasquatchfamilyreunion.com and check it out. And um, I was there last year uh, at this particular site, and it's along this a beautiful river there that you're able to swim. In May, you should be able to get in. I'm I'm a little I'm here. <laughs> I'm I had to try to <laughs> so yeah, I was talking about the beautiful river that runs right there uh, next to the campground and all the yes. trees. Yeah, it is. And that's the uh, Columbia River mm -hmm. there. And so yeah, it happens in, in Kettle Falls. It's not far from uh, Canada, really. It's a beautiful area. Um, the Native American settlers uh, were very prominent in that area. Um, and then like the Hudson Bay C Company came up the Columbia in that area. So it's got a really rich history um, and they really honor it as well. They really honor that history in Kettle Falls in that area. So it's it's really nice to have that energy and that that spirit still of the, you know, the tribal kind of feel where they're, they're really honoring the people that came here before us mm -hmm. and so, so um and for the people that show up that? for the people that want to show up i just have a feeling there'll be people that show up for the very first time and so they're taking there the, are yeah there's gonna like, be quite a few yeah it looks like that and so it's a step outside of their comfort zone right they're gonna just you know just go in and and see how it goes and and uh, take that risk. And it's really worth the risk to take. I know with me, it's the first time I actually saw a glyph myself was at your Sasquatch family reunion. Not oh, a wow. It's the first time I'd seen one. And so I just kind of like freaked out because it was surreal. I, you know, I'd seen them, but I never had experienced it before. And so my first glyph was at your uh, reunion. So. I feel like there's a lot of first for people if they go. Not that there are. a glyph or not a glyph, but it, it's not that so much as it's, um, it will boost your progression um, for sure with your relationship with the Sasquatch, wouldn't you say? Yes, yes, it does. And especially, you know, people are um, hoping to, to make that connection and the Sasquatch really do, come and and attend this event so there are more of them around um you know a lot of people come with their their whole clan from their area and things like that so it, it it's not just a reunion for the humans i mean when i say sasquatch family reunion it's really a reunion for them too and all these different sasquatch clans that may have never even met or maybe they just get together once a year like this it's a family reunion mm -hmm. so um you know they kind of let loose a little bit like we do they're they're in a a comfortable space um where we all honor and trust one another and you know the the weirder you are like the more you're accepted so <laughs> it's um it's it's really great yeah, and um, but many people have told me about first time experiences that they've had there, whether it be glyphs or telepathic communication or visual sightings of them. Uh, a lot of times it's, you know, telepathic communication for the first time. Um, 
many people have told me they felt touched. Um, and also a lot of people have witnessed lots of things going on in the sky, um, you know, ships dancing around in different lights that really have no explanation, just kind of darting across the sky. Um, you know, a lot of people have heard things like walking in the woods and couldn't find the source of it. And, um, you know, so a lot of that, um, you know, first time, I guess, experiences for the physical sensations, but even better than that, a lot of people say they have their first dream about Sasquatch during it. Mm -hmm. Um, and that's not a, that's not a dream. It, it's just not, that's the visit. That's the way they're visiting. And, um, yeah. And, and besides that, uh, so many people have the, the best part of it have told me that they've just had this huge heart expansion, you know, just this huge heart opening. And I I've lost count of how many people have told me that attending this event has completely changed their lives. Exactly. completely change their lives and that's that's what it's all about it is where they that's what it's all about they exactly they connect with their people their family their tribe they can you know yeah and then so much opens up to them usually they're introduced to to new ideas or new practices or, or whatever it is or even just spending some time in the woods or you know, doing a, a community thing where people are really getting along and wanting to help one another, you know, wanting to cook with each other, you know, the, those kinds of things. Um, a lot of people don't have that regular experience and that in itself will change you, you yeah. know, when you're able to, to to trust and just love these strangers all around you and you, you know their family. Right. Well, and being, yeah. you become so alone and isolated. And, and yeah. you know, I just remember there's a lot of good crying <laughs> that happens. Mm -hmm. People have that aha when they're trying to create that spiritual message and, and put that into the body. Sometimes those tears of all that pain and suffering just come up for healing. It does. It does. And this year I'm actually going to do it. I've, I've tried to do it the last couple of years and it just wasn't, you know, the right time or things weren't organized correctly and it, it didn't happen. But this year um, on Sunday evening of the event, um, we're going to uh, be doing what's called an angel wash. Mm -hmm. And it is so, so beautiful. It is such a, amazing where it, everybody is a part of it you don't have to be a part of it if you don't want to because it is it's a it's an intimate healing like it's emotional for everybody and that could be different emotions some people like laugh hysterically and some people just sob their eyes out but no matter what it's really healing <laughs> and just really um loving and uh, so, yeah, it's an angel wash where everybody repeatedly sings the song, um, I behold you, beautiful one. I behold you, child of the earth and sun. Let my love wash over you. Let my love watch over you. Mm -hmm. And so you just sing that over and over. And people walk through this tunnel of all the other people who are just loving on them and in um, intuitive ways, you know, sometimes you, you might just pass through where they guide you through by holding your elbow or some people like really intuitively might put their hand over your heart or some people might kiss your forehead or something, you know? And so, um, it, it can be, like I said, I, I totally understand why that would be uncomfortable for people. Um, so you're not obligated to join, but most people that are in this vibration and they want to and it is it's such a healing and amazing experience so this year i'm definitely incorporating that in there um because i i'm really feeling guided that it is time to do that um and there's a couple others that have done that with me before at the fairy congress uh forest green and uh 
Sandra Talt, both of them are going to be presenters. So I know that they've been a part of this. And so the, the three of us will help kind of facilitate that together. Yeah. Yeah. I did it a long time ago and it is such yeah. a, it is such a beautiful, <laughs> open, loving ceremony that you just show up and, you know, to have, and that's what the Sasquatch are about, right? Is that to remind us that we are our love and we came from love. We are love. And, and yes. that's really what they're about. And that's part of their mission. Would you say with us? Is It is. Mm -hmm. It is. And, and actually a, a part of this <clears throat> ceremony, you know, you can invite your guides and your angels and all of this to, to participate, you know, which we do. And uh, because everybody is already in that, that spirit, I mean, we're already connecting with the Sasquatch and we're at a high vibration and everything. Um, a lot of that whole ceremony is the love and the energy felt from the Sasquatch and from, you know, whatever higher dimensional guides, different people might be connected to. But um, I've had people tell me that they felt, you know, like passing through, they're like, oh my gosh, I could feel mother mary touching me or i could feel you know you you just feel the presence of very in particular energy so i love it i love it yeah. <laughs> well we're almost ready for a break believe it or not we're right there and so um uh, i'm i'm excited to actually be a part of this uh, invited to be a part of this and um and I hope they continue, they keep growing each year. And so I'm thinking when we get back from the break, let's talk about the messages that they have for humanity and what they hold for humanity. And, and I'm hoping that um, I have a surprise visitor that's gonna come in and say hi to you. Um, maybe right after the break, you're gonna crack up and um, that we could uh, ask for any questions for those that are listening in on Facebook for you, Kelly, uh, that we could uh, we'd be glad to take any questions from from anyone who is on Facebook right now as well. And um, and so again, they can reach uh, you on uh, where is it on SasquatchFamilyReunion.com. That's SasquatchFamilyReunion.com. And we'll get back and want to talk about your personal work that you do too. You're an amazing gifted psychic uh, healer. Uh, I want to talk about I Hear You opened a new office. So I'm excited yeah. about that for you and where all this is going, right? Um, yes. You just kind of keep showing up and things keep happening. And so, <laughs> <laughs> and so um, are you, are you writing any books right now? Are you writing a book or anything like that? We have like one minute. No, it's real slow going. Um, I'm I'm receiving messages and I'm writing them down. But at this point, they're not being compiled because there's more to come. Okay. So yeah, I think because life is is just moving so fast. Once I get a a moment of of quiet, I think I'll have an opportunity to write some more. Well, and that's coming. You're an amazing writer. Yeah. <laughs> Bring your your uh, the viewer, uh, the reader right into what you're describing. It's really beautiful. So I Thank do you. have to say that. And also you do have another a second conference coming up after this one. And would you like to just give us a little information on that as well? Sure thing. Um, I haven't started really advertising that too heavily. I don't have tickets for sale yet for that because I'm still kind of putting that together and planning the May one first. Um, but uh, so this year, you know, the the reunion that we're having is the end of May and it's always been Labor Day weekend at the beginning of September. And so this is um, a big change this year. I was really guided to do that. And now I, I also see some great benefits in that, especially that we'll get to have campfires at a camp out because in September you can't, we're, we're on burn bans. Um, so, um, but so September 4th and 5th this year, um, we'll be hosting the very first Sacred Sasquatch Symposium. Mm. And that's also going to be in Kettle Falls. 
um, but not at the campground. It'll be at a location actually very close to it, but uh, it's like a, a large cabin venue. It, it has a, a full kitchen, so we'll we'll be cooking in there, kind of doing a potluck. But um, people can camp out there. We want to kind of keep the attendance at around a hundred, so it's not you know too super crowded. Um, and the benefits of this as well is that well we have electricity and Wi-Fi and things, so we can um, stream. So it won't only be just a physical gathering, um, but we can have people join us remotely too, especially since so many still aren't able to, to travel, you know, with borders being closed and things like that. So that'll be an opportunity for, for people to join us this year where, where they wouldn't be able to. Thanks. And so I don't have my full speaker lineup or anything like that, but um, it's coming. That's good. <laughs> Well, we're going to break right now, everyone. We'll be right back after this break for more of the Cosmic Oracle Show and our, our guest, our beautiful guest, uh, Kelly Rainbow Butterfly. Stay tuned. What? No, Jeremy, I'm getting back on the radio in a second. What?
Welcome back to the Cosmic Oracle Show. This is your host, Barbara Jean Lindsay, and we are coming to you live from Sierra Madre, California, and Coalville, Washington. Thanks for tuning on in with us. We have our show every Friday from 5 to 7, uh, Los Angeles time. And I want to thank you for keeping us on the air as we are all a volunteer station here on Revolution Radio. And uh, we're here due to your donations. So give whatever you can, $5, $10. Uh, go to freedomslips.com, freedomslips.com, and give whatever you can. And we want to thank you in advance. And uh, if you're looking at going to or ever thought of or ever even dreamed that there was would be a an amazing Sasquatch reunion, a family reunion, it is happening here at Kelly Butterfly. Uh, her reunion is something that you just don't want to miss. And it is a life-changing event. And we have Kelly live with us here today. Welcome back to the show, Kelly. Thank you. <laughs> so gosh, I yeah. what if we could, I think what I'd like to do, I'd like to talk a little bit. I'd like for our listeners to get to know you a little better too. And but before we do, I have someone here who just loves you and adores you and is in my neighborhood. <laughs> I saw her. I saw her creeping and crawling. How are you, Joanna? Oh, You've been on my mind. Well, it's so good to yeah. you. Know, it was really fun just listening to you live. Oh, good. Nice to see you. And I'll see yeah. you um, sometime this spring. Okay, great. I All look right. forward to it. Okay. <laughs> Thanks right. for popping in and saying hi. <laughs> uh, yeah, so let's let's talk first about um, your relationship with the Sasquatch and they have changed your life. They've also have they how how have they changed your life? Are you more of who you are or are you less afraid or what are some of the things you think that they work with you? Um, yeah. And, and not only with you, but with everyone, right? Yes. Yeah. And, you know, they might work with different people on different aspects, depending on, um, you know, where they may need growth in certain areas. So they're making more focus on, on a particular, you know, topic with others. But um, I guess since I've connected with them, I've um, really come into just a, a higher knowing of myself, um, of, well, God, or how, whatever label that you want to give the divine, the great spirit, um, you know, but the source, the creator that we're, we're all connected to. I have, uh, just a much better understanding of that. I, I have so much a uh, better understanding of, well, like I said, divine nature and, and nature in general um, and nature, not only being like, you know, watching um, animal behaviors or watching how a plant grows, you know, um, th there's so much simplicity in it. Um, but also it's, um, well, I guess understanding the cycles and the seasons uh, and everything like that. And so it, it's not just relevant to my life. Uh, it's not just relevant to everybody's life and the cycles and the seasons of earth. But, you know, so earth is going through these cycles and seasons and she's evolving. She's been diseased, but yet she's shifting and she's changing. And so humans are doing all of that with her. So having this deeper understanding of, of nature and of mother earth and of how of universal laws um, gives me just so much of a better understanding of life and how things are just what they are and how things are absolutely perfect exactly as they are. Um, and so it's really just learning how to um, uh, I don't know if you even want to say the word except it's just learning how to, to be no matter what. And, uh, you know, so that's some of the biggest lessons that I've really learned, but, um, you know, on, on another, I guess, to kind of break that down a little, um, just learning 
to be more compassionate and learning how to, um, you know, be more empathic, I guess, see, see the, the full spectrum of things instead of just seeing something through a narrow mindset or, you know, having ideals or beliefs that fit in a little box. Um, I've really learned how to look beyond all of that and see the, the greater picture to everything. And so, um, you know, that has allowed me to really not have much fear. I, I really, I don't live with, with fear. I'm not saying that it doesn't, you know, sure, fearful things come up, uh, you know, but you just move right through them. I, I guess maybe the, the more accurate word would be to say that I'm fearless, <laughs> you know, and so um, I've, uh, you know, and, and because of that, um, I also don't feel that, um, or I, I guess I should say, I feel that I, I have more control uh, of my emotions because I realize that I don't have to get emotional about things. You don't have to be, you know, angry, but if you feel the anger, see that and honor it, observe it, let it go. That's okay. That's, that's nature. That's a part of life, but you don't stay there. And so it's all of these kinds of, um, ideals um, that have really helped change my life. And they, you know, they may sound like concepts, but once you apply them to your life, it's completely, totally life changing. And it opens you up and it just um, allows more clarity to come for the larger lessons. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Clearing and, karmas. And, and, and so you created this relationship with yourself and with the Sasquatch and with humanity and with the environment. And in this, are the Sasquatches the caretakers of the forest? Are they the caretakers of so much more? Um, you know, because is it, can it be that simple? And, and, and so um, amazing at the same time. Right, well, you know, that's, it's um, a complex topic really. Um, they are the caretakers of the earth and of the forest, um, but so are we. And so that's what they're kind of trying to teach us and remind us that that's our role. We're, we are the most intelligent life forms on earth and we're destroying her, mm -hmm. you know, for the most part. Did we forget that? Yeah. But you, you know what I mean? Um, yes, yes. People have forgotten their their divine connection. You know, they they look at a you know whatever they look at a, an animal even as separate from them, but they're they're not. Or um, you know anything like that. But everything has an energy, and so yeah, we've been really disconnected from that nature, and also from the star elders from from the divine. Uh, the star elders that that created us and because we don't feel the connection to them we don't know who we are so we don't feel the connection to the earth and we're made up of earth we're made of earth we're made of stars and we don't even remember that so you know you, we see, we're right now we're mostly made up of pharmaceutical <laughs> drugs and things like that so it's um you know i mean humans in general i'm yeah, right. yeah, you know what I mean. Yes. So, um, yeah, so that's a big part of it is, um, yeah, you know, how they're just trying to tell us we we don't need the technology. It's just a, a simple, um, you know, like the old saying of chop wood, carry water. Um, it, it's just life is as simple as that. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, there's the spiritual connection. But if you were chopping wood and carrying water, you, you would be much more in tune with that spiritual connection. Right. And with the earth itself, right? You would yes. appreciate that water and you would appreciate that wood. Yes. <laughs> you would have gratitude for all of the way the setup, there's a natural setup here if we can find it and appreciate it. And exactly. And some of their work with us, right? Where they can, hey, remember, remember, um, you know, who you are, why you're here, and, and we really need you to help take care of our planet and, 
and get not only I think getting back the self -res the respect for our planet, but our own self respect. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So there there's so many you know levels to it. it it's our own um, <clears throat> clearing and our own learning the lessons that we came here to learn you know so that's really like the divine source of things like us us humans we keep coming back here to learn some ultimate lessons that we haven't quite learned yet and so they're kind of you know the sasquatch just like other guides they kind of step up to help us remember and um there's some of the beings that we can have the greatest triggers of remembrances from because we're so much like them you know they live here on earth too and right. they work they walk on two legs and they're built like we are and you know there's so much more of a, a closer dna connection with them and um closer cosmic memories like even if you can't remember the whole Orion saga, which we were all a part of, um, you know, surely you can remember a little bit of Earth, right? Because you're here right now. So they're they're trying to help us, you know, remember that. You know, as as much as we're open to, you know, if if uh, people aren't open to it, they're not going to press their they're not going to press it. They're they're here to give messages, and people will you know, planting a seed and people will bloom in their own time. Right, right. And and with this too, the connection, I know I was blown away the first time that I thought of Sasquatch with an extraterrestrial connection. I I didn't know that the two of those go together. And and that if you there is, I don't know what the probability is of of if you see uh a Sasquatch or feel a Sasquatch or smell a Sasquatch or hear a Sasquatch or know a Sasquatch or telepath from a Sasquatch, that there could be a ship right there as well, a, a, a extraterrestrial ship, or like you were talking earlier, a portal. So yes, a multi-dimensional and that connection. That's a whole nother, you know, for me it was like a whole nother evolution mm -hmm. of, of who they are as as beings. It is. It is. And that's, you know, why I said it's like, you know, really complex, but they, you know, just like us, they were created by star elders as well. It's just that they haven't lost their connection to them the way that we have, the way that the humans have. So we could have all of that too. And one day we will, we did before we will again, but humans will go through uh, cycles and seasons and, and changes. Um, you know, and maybe the human won't be the same human. I mean, look look at humans now. We're a lot different than we were a hundred years ago. Only a hundred years ago, and we're a lot different. So imagine another hundred years from now, how different we could be. We'll still be humans, but very different. So um, <clears throat> you know, so there's always you know opportunities to 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 learn all of that. Um, but yeah, our connection with the star elders, you know, our souls, uh, we may feel drawn, each individual may feel really drawn to other star systems. Like for me, I feel a, a really strong uh, connection with Sirius and also with Andromeda, um, you know, and so, and some Arcturus, you know, so those are like some that I can really pinpoint. Others are just like, obviously, like, I know I'm from the Pleiades or, um, you know, there's all kinds of different examples. Um, and really we're kind of probably a little bit of all of them, but on a soul level, we may feel a connection with one star system or a different incarnation um, you know, even on earth, like, well, you know, Egypt or some people feel the strong connection to India or something, even, you know, if you're an American, you've never traveled to those places, but yet, you know, that like, that's a part of me that's in my soul. I, it's familiar to me. And um, so same with the star systems and some people will feel a much stronger connection with the Sasquatch than they, they would others. Um, and the Sasquatch then likewise are 
can sometimes be more connected with different star systems. So even though in the form that they're in right now, the form that we think of as Sasquatch is these large, hairy beings that live in the forest, they're, they're built and designed that way to live in the forest. That's why, I mean, you know, they can, they can survive in raw nature way better than we can. <laughs> We're just little pink squishy things and they've got, you know, the muscle and the hair and the uh, everything to, you know, and even the knowledge on how to forage berries and things like that. And uh, yeah, so uh, humans, that's not a natural instinct for us. So that's also, you know, and that's to help kind of remind us of our vulnerability and our connection to the star elders. Um, I don't know if that backfired with some, <laughs> because a lot of people don't remember that connection, but that's what it's designed to, you know, that you're a part of something greater. Right. Well, you know, like um, and never, they never, the Sasquatch were always a part of their family. Right. I'd love to hear Yeah, exactly. Or that. Like, oh, well, of course, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And so they can, you know, some are more earthbound some spend most of their time on earth and they may not have the same kind of gifts and abilities as other ones like you know Camus for instance who um, is the one that ch channeled um, the messages to Sunbow and things he's the the eldest elder who was kind of tasked with communicating this to the humans so that we can understand um, you know and so he's uh, almost can be thought of like an ascended master, so to speak, you know? And so that's a lot different than the other ones that are on earth foraging for berries. And that's even different than others um, that are like ancestors and that are guides for people. So, um, you know, and I, it's not like a, a hierarchy or anything like that, but it's just to, understand that they can they're just as multi-dimensional and they have different tasks and different lessons as well they're not you know just because they're more evolved than we are on many levels um doesn't mean that they're better than us or that they don't have karma or that they don't have lessons to learn or, or that they don't make mistakes because they do too right. so um you know that's what's uh, a lot of people think, you know, to, to, you know, I don't know, pray to the almighty Sasquatch and that's not how it is. They're, they're family, they're friends. It's a, it's a, um, yeah, it's, it's a symbiotic relationship. Yeah. And so with, with humanity and with Sasquatch, um, what do you think is, um, and maybe you've had a conversation, um, with them is what are some of the things that they love about us humans have they ever expressed that to you some of the things that they like yes or about us or it would be they do they they do like us i mean in general because they all have their individual personalities you know some like chocolate and some don't but um from what i hear they they really like um the things that we have talent in, like especially making music. Mm -hmm. They love music. They love to hear us make music. They think it's pretty cool that we have the ability to make that happen. Mm -hmm. And uh, they really enjoy that. I think they also um, admire um, the discuss the, the like the discoveries that we've made, even though they don't care for technology, I think that they, they honor uh, and respect how our minds work and how humans have been able to create um, these incredible things. Let's, I mean, look at how, look at the inventions that, that humans have made to make life so much easier. So while even though, you know, they don't personally want anything to do with machines, um, they think that's pretty innovative of us. And they're like, Hey, thumbs up. You guys did pretty good there. 
<laughs> you just lost your consciousness in the process. So, um, <laughs> so um, yeah, so those are a couple of things. I, I know that they just really in, enjoy when we are in joy. Um, they're happy when, when we're happy. Um, they do like how we gather, you know, they like the family. They like, they like to see the, the family thing. And a lot of people aren't like that. So, um, you know, uh, a lot of people just don't get together with groups of people that they love. And so, um, they like to really see that. Mm -hmm. Um, and they've also commented that they like how we look. They think we're pretty good looking. Yeah. I love that. I love that. <laughs> and you know something that you said earlier in today's show that I think it's profound in a way that when you say the Sasquatch family reunion, it's not just about the humans showing up in search of the Sasquatch. Right. Mm -hmm. It is that right. the Sasquatch actually have their family reunion with us, with themselves they and do. with us. And, and we they do. And and some of them, you know, like I said, have never met or you know, they're they're reserved with their children, with their young, because they raise them, they teach them, they keep them safe from different situations and, until they're old enough. And so this Sasquatch family reunion is, is one of those events that they can take the kids to, you know? And so it's, um, it's really cool. So they're, so it's a, it's a teaching lesson for them, you know, like, okay, yeah, these are humans, like, don't, uh, you know, poop in their tent now, <laughs> whatever, you know? So, um, what, whatever kind of lessons they have to give them, I don't know, but it, it's probably more, um, interaction, but they see things that they've never seen, but then there's different tribes that come from all over, um, especially when we were having them in Chihuahua and we had a lot more international people, um, you know, prior to the pandemic and things like that. So we would have people from uh, Russia with the Yeti. We had several people come from Australia with the Yowie and the Dulaga, um, different just different parts and even within the u.s um because it's no exception i mean even within the u.s there's different areas um like for example we're going to have i think four different people this year from florida none of them even know each other they're just four different floridians coming up this way but down down in florida that's where i grew up actually and um so they have um uh, what they call, you know, Sasquatch, that's a more popular name for the Pacific Northwest area. So there's different names for the Sasquatch and every state probably or different sections of each state even. Um, I think Missouri had one called Momo or something. And um, so in Florida, they're called the Skunk Ape or that's one of the names that they're referred to as the Skunk Ape. And they say that they're like, um, actually a different um race they're you know made up differently i mean culturally differently but they look different they can have different builds or different hair and and things like that and so the skunk ape um are some of those that like live in some of the swampier areas and so you know the ones in missouri would have never met those ones and they would have never met the ones in washington state and they may not have ever met the ones that are you know wherever up in new york state you know in upper new york or or something like that and so um that's so vastly different too that they're able to meet other tribes and other races of their own people just just like us right. you know i mean we're getting together and, and it's like, oh, hey, yeah, the people that are here look different than the people in my neighborhood. You, I mean, people of all different cultures come to this event, too. And so that's really cool to see. And they're all family. Really? So it's, it's very much the same. Well, and, and I've heard the Sasquatch. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, well, I was just going to say, I, I know that some of the Sasquatch have shown some curiosity too. some people 
um, during the retreat, they said that, you know, it, well, they feel that it's young ones would just kind of mess with their stuff, op open up their bag or, um, you know, while Hale was filming, they kept playing with the camera and, um, you know, so different things like that. They just get curious and like, Ooh, what are these human things? You know, what do you use that for? And, you know, so it's interesting. Well, it's kind of fun, probably like with us, we've read a lot about it. We've seen video about it. Uh, we've talked to other people about it, but then you get to go to a place where it's set up for you to have that next step or to have an enhanced experience of some sort where you take it to the next level. And maybe the same with them where they've studied us, they've heard about us, they've been all, but then they get to actually um, be with us. So that's a whole that's an experience, right? So you learn yes. a lot when you have experience. So you can yes. love a lot, you can feel a lot, you can love a lot, but to have an experience of something is quite a learning. It is. And that's the, the life changing events that so many talk about too. You know, that first time experience, whatever it is, is enough to make them a, a true believer in whatever it is that they're seeking. Mm -hmm. I just remember that mm -hmm. one big circle, I think it was 2019 at Chihuahua, when everyone gathered, I could feel and sense outside of our circle in another circle around us were the Sasquatch right there. Mm -hmm. Just so present, you know, and when yes. people first feel that, they go, what is that? Because they're not familiar with it. And then right. by the time they leave on Monday, it's like, oh, you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so yeah so Seth, and so with the world with the world um uh i just want to ask probably a silly question but i would love to hear what you have to say about it you've been in this for a long time and you've dedicated a lot of your time and a lot of your life to being um an ambassador for for the a spokesperson for the sasquatch and so I, and someone asked me this, that's why I'm asking it too. Why do you think they haven't been found, per se? Well, because, well, they know better, basically, for one. They don't want to be found. And it's not hard for them to elude us and, you know, to not be found. So they can, you know, physically they're able to change their vibration so that they're at a different frequency. They're vibrating at a different rate um, that, than we are in this 3D reality. And so they can be there and just be undetected. Some sensitive people can, can detect them, uh, you know, at times, but um, otherwise, you know, they can be right there and people don't realize it and they can do that at any time. So, um, and not only that, they can, you know, they can cloak themselves or they can, you know, just really kind of blip into a whole other uh, dimension altogether. And then, so the same, you know, physically why we haven't found remains of them, um, they bury their dead usually under big boulders um, or they would take them off planet. I, I'm not sure what they would do with their body, but they're, um, you know, they can travel by, by ship, by spaceship, um, you know, or go through portals and things like that. So a lot of times they just do not leave that evidence to be found. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that's why um, you, there's just not much proof of their existence. But you know what, there's millions and millions and millions of, of reports that sound pretty similar. So I'm pretty sure they're being seen. <laughs> yeah, I do. I agree with you. 100%. Yeah. I just had to ask that. So, uh, and it's kind of a funny question. It's like, uh, if you say the words love, it, and, but can you hold love in your hand? No, you can't. But does love exist? Yes, it does. Most mm -hmm. it does. Kind of like that. Right. Same with, with the Sasquatch. So where do you see the Sasquatch in our relationship? going in the future? Where would you like for it to see? Or have you been given any information about where we're going as a species um, in relationship to humanity and, and maybe uh, in relationship to our, our mother earth and then the cosmos? 
Yeah, well, that's really going to be a, a, a co-creative effort on all of our parts. So we can't say for sure uh, indefinitely one way or another that it's going to go during a certain timeline. Um, but what I like to envision and what the Sasquatch have said that they would envision um, as an ideal situation for the planet uh, would be to live in peace and harmony with all living beings, with honor and respect. That doesn't mean that we shouldn't kill animals to eat them. That doesn't mean that we shouldn't pull apples off the tree to eat them. But that means that we do it with honor and respect. We communicate with them. We thank them for their sacrifice. Um, you know, we help one another where we should be in service to each other, whatever we may have to offer, whether it be physical labor or whether it's babysitting the kids or, you know, whether it's, it, it doesn't matter. It doesn't even have to be a, a physical thing, but whatever, however, we're able to contribute to be in service to others to try to make life better for others in a loving and honorable and respectful way without judgment, um, that would be ideal. Mm -hmm. And um, because Earth is a planet with such polarity, um, you know, the, it, it, it is a struggle. So like even, you know, for example, the Sasquatch family reunion, there could be, you know, a couple hundred people there and we're all like-minded and we're all exactly what I'm describing right now. We're all those kinds of people where we just want to help and hug and, you know, eat, <laughs> dance. And so we, we just want to have, um, you know, all display that mutual respect. And so that's great. But um, the rest of the world may not be so on board with that idea. And so um, that's why it's also important to if you find your tribe and your your people or feel drawn to you know that that's that's how it really changes your life too you are living the way you're meant to live you're loving the way you're meant to love um and so ultimately we do have the ability to get there we totally we can get there we've been there before we can do it again um it's just it doesn't happen overnight and the more energy that we give to healing ourselves, the, the more energy is just going to go out and healing the collective and getting back to that space. And, um, you know, as far as like some kind of big grand disclosure where the aliens come and land and say, hey, we're here, we tricked you all along or, you know, something like that. Um, I don't really see it necessarily happening that way it, it would be great if that just one day you know happened but that's really not how things work <laughs> and so um disclosure is happening daily by the minute disclosure continues to happen so uh it's not necessarily going to be some big grand event um but it happens in these little events it happens at the sasquatch family reunion and it happens at this healing gathering over here. And it happens over at this, you know, um, star co conference over here. And it happens at this rainbow gathering over there. And it happens at all these different places where people are getting together and practicing that, living that way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. It, it reminds me of something. Um, I have a little Sasquatch uh, patch that I got, I think at one of your reunions, and I have it on the back of my car. And I'm not thinking about it. I forget that it's there, right? I'm driving down the street. And this guy drives by me and he goes, like, there's a big thumbs up and this big smile. I'm thinking, I don't understand. And it's, and then I, I got it. It's, he's saying hello to the Sasquatch part. So that was cool. <laughs> <laughs> that's in downtown yeah. LA, you know, so. 
So you don't really <laughs> know when it's going to come or how it's going to come either. Right. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Well, I'm looking forward to it. And I understand you have um, an amazing man from Russia that's going to be speaking. When I read about that at, the, at your event this year, I was really excited about that. Igor, yes. Oh my goodness. When did he first come? He's come um, two different years. So he wasn't there in 2019. So he was there in 2018. And maybe, maybe it was just the one year. See, they all just flow together. I forget. But um, anyway, yes, Igor, Dr. Igor Bertsev, he is um, a researcher in in russia he's been doing this since he was young in in his 20s um and so he's really gathered and collected a lot of different you know physical evidence but he's so he's been in, involved in bringing the truth about the yeti or the snowman they call him the snowman in russia oh. and um so you know he's been doing this for uh, a very long time he's written several books and things like that but he's always wanted to have a real connection with them like so he knows everything there is to know about everything sasquatch except for that personal connection that he really wanted and then since he came to the reunion a few years ago all of that really opened up for him and and blossomed and um I, I forget what he said his experience was at the reunion. Um, it wasn't as major as, as what happened last year, though, which is this movie that they're making called Yeti and Me, which uh, it's a documentary. It stars Igor and it's all about and what and it's also what he's going to be sharing at the reunion this year um, is the experience that he had with another man and connecting with the Sasquatch on some kind of excursion, you know, on a, a, a research that they went and did and they actually connected with them, like really like communicated with him. He shook hands with a Sasquatch. What? Igor shook hands oh. with a Yeti, with a Yeti. Wow. Wow. And, and that. they also, um, yeah. And they also trashed their stuff like before they made the connection like really so it was really a very you know it's a going to be a, a really great physical encounter and story to share and so um yeah so they're making a, a documentary about that as well um in in russia but it's going to have english subtitles so um but igor is uh fantastic and i'm so glad that he's had this um experience too and the a year and a half ago is it yeah i was in kentucky it was after our um 2019 event um and like three weeks later i flew out to kentucky to speak at this um bigfoot retreat that was put on by reva mcmanus of uh bigfoot madness and so um Igor was a part of that. He wasn't able to come to ours because he was speaking at another or something. So anyway, I got to spend some time with him um, in Kentucky. And so we got to know each other, you know, a little bit better. And even at that time, he had not yet had this experience. Um, but I told him, you know, I said, Igor, I said, don't, don't worry. I said, it's coming. And I feel like it's coming really soon. And, and so for now, for him to be like, okay, it happened and somebody wants to make a movie about it. Um, you know, that's that's really fantastic. So he's a great guy. And and some of the other um people will you and Don Nicholson, uh Jessica Martin with her astrology knowledge, uh Katie Indy Crow will be there this year. This is gonna be the first year for her to be able to attend, and so that's great. Um, we've a, a lot of people, some of our, our new presenters this year, um, Alex Urbina, he's in California. I think somewhere not far from you. Yeah. Um, Sandra Talt, she'll be teaching a, a class about, um, telepathy and, and tuning into human energy fields and things like that. Uh, mm -hmm. cause we've had a lot of people, you know, request that. Um, and, um, Igor Hale 
Mednick who made the the films, um, and also Forrest. Uh, he was returning. We weren't. I know me too. And so we weren't um, quite sure initially if he could come, but he confirmed that he could. Uh, and of course, Garrett's and the Chinos. Um, you know, they are our favorites, and you know. It's, yes. And so there'll, there'll be some others too, but we've got a great lineup, you know, for this year. And so I'm excited about it. And it's a lot of uh, fresh material to, to be shared. And, um, you know, so much of it really relevant to right now and what we need to, to really learn and know right now. Right. To focus on. So how can we best serve you and your work? How can we, can we get a reading from you? Can we drop in at your office? How, how can Definitely. We yeah, let's hear it. Yes. That. So it's been um, a goal of mine, uh, I guess I'd say lifelong dream, but it hasn't been my whole life because I didn't know. But um, I've always really wanted just um, community to have, some kind of healing center to have some kind of community hub where everybody's participating in different things and and sharing their talents and their gifts and their services and everything like that. And um, this last October, we were going to have a yard sale. We had a bunch of stuff that we needed to get rid of. Plus, it was an opportunity. I, I've been making organite and things like that. Um, and I thought, hey, you know what, that's a great opportunity to get rid of some of that stuff. And it was also kind of this kickstart to, I don't know what I'm doing, but I want to have something that's community friendly. And so we just kind of put it out there. It's a community yard sale. If you have stuff you want to bring, or we'll even have like a free store. We had a section of all kinds of stuff for just free. Mm -hmm. Um you know, and so we just wanted to do that because it, it was like we got to we got to start somewhere, and and um, even though we weren't expecting it to be big, um, I just knew that I was like, you know what? If we do this, somebody's going to show up, and it's going to be the person that we need to meet. Like somebody, if we do this, the universe is going to speak. I just know it. And so um, the weekend that we were going to do it. Uh, it snowed like six inches or more. It was crazy. And so we ended up having this uh, garage sale the following week on Halloween, actually. It was on Halloween. And we have all our stuff out there. And this lady comes up. I've never met her. Her name's Jamie. And she comes up and she goes, oh, my God, look at all this Sasquatch stuff. Look at this organite. Oh, my God, I can feel the love and intention in this. And she's just like completely totally aligned with everything looking at christians painted rocks and everything and she's like so we're starting this thing um and she's like we just started talking about it two weeks ago but we're gonna have this um artisan vendor market you know that we're setting up and she was gonna evolve it into a co-op and so long story short um in a very short amount of time the Oak Street Artisan Market was manifested and it is the most awesome, beautiful community space. It's, it's got all the feel good stuff and all the, you know, all the hippie vibes and everything that I love too, but it's um, amazing products by artisans. Of, you know, there's all kinds of beauty things. And um, anyway, I totally recommend, there's no way you could not enjoy visiting this place. Um, and I feel so blessed to have an office there, um, a space where I can create and give readings. I'll do, I do psychic readings. Um, also introducing um, spirit guide and galactic heritage readings. That's actually kind of new for me, but I've actually had probably a dozen people ask me if I do that. And so I decided, you know what? I think it's time to just do that. And so, um, you know, I sell some of my Organite products there. Uh, and there's also a, a shared room where I'm offering uh, rainbow Reiki. Um, and uh, Jessica also does biogenesis and astrology in there. And there's massage in there. So it's, it's a, a shared room for healing space. Um, you know, whoever needs to use it at the time. 
Um, so anyway, those would be absolutely wonderful ways to help support me or come see me and, um, you know, get, get a reading. Um, also coming to the, the Sasquatch family reunion um, and the, the books, the Sasquatch message to humanity books, uh, one, two, and three, it's a three book series for now. There's going to be a fourth eventually. So, <laughs> um, and so the first two were, are written by Sunbo. Mm -hmm. What's that? Where are they available? Where can they find those? You can find those on Amazon um, or you can, uh, well, actually right now it's pretty much just Amazon unless you connect me, uh, connect with me directly. I have plenty of copies to sell. So if, if you would, you know, like to connect with me directly, that would be, um, ideal. You know, that's, that's more money in both authors, pocket mine and, and Sunbow's. Um, he's the author of these books. And so, um, uh, anyway, yeah, those are ways that you, we can connect. Um, I'm on Facebook, Kelly rainbow butterfly. I have, um, Oh, I'm sorry. Also the books can be purchased. It goes through Amazon, but I have a website, which is, uh, Sasquatch message.com. And that is not www. So it's just, https sasquatchmessage.com um and the books are available there it links you to to purchase them um and there's all kinds of really great stories there's there's other blog articles um there's some experiencer um stories on there uh as well as some other things that i or others have written that weren't published in the books yet so they may eventually be compiled in there um but that is a really great great website and resource to learn more about this uh as well as sunbow's website that he manages um which is scenic sasquatch.com um s-c-e-n-i-c uh, sasquatch.com which stands for sasquatch close encounters oh wait am i doing that right sasquatch close encounters what is the end oh i forgot i forgot so anyway sorry somebody um, <laughs> <right? laughs> so um yeah inner oh i'm not even gonna try anyway um it's but that is a great website and a lot of people um submit their sasquatch stories on there too so um you know a lot of people interact on there but there's some fabulous information so uh, basically everything and anything sasquatch especially on a more esoteric level um, both of those websites have a lot of great information and, and resources. Sounds fantastic. And so until we see you <laughs> again, um, we're at the close of our show almost here. So isn't that amazing? We just I know it is. Rip right through it. So I want to thank you for all that you do for Sasquatch community and for humanity, right? And and keeping us, um, um, our hearts opened in a sometimes not so heartfelt world, right? And that we're connected as one. I remember that as one of their big messages, right? That, that we are all one and connected in the heart. And so, um, so maybe our, your last message from, for our humanity that's listening right now, as an ambassador of the Sasquatch community, Kelly, I'm, putting you up there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, I suppose that final message would be um, just to be, be in a, a, a heart, a loving space. Actually, I'm going to share one other thing that I'm involved in because it's relevant to this. Mm -hmm. And um, it's one of the best things that we can all do because this is how we begin to heal ourselves and heal our collective humanity and everything. Um, and it's not being selfish, but it's being self ish and looking more 
inward and um you know honoring what comes to us looking at those lessons but one of the things that um i've been doing actually i participated in this years ago um and now i've been running my own the the intenders of the highest good sharing circles or empowerment meetings um, that was a concept that was developed by a man named Tony Burroughs that lived in Arkansas. And I used to um, attend some intenders meetings when I, I lived there. Um, and I, I only went to like three of them or maybe four of them um, before I moved to Washington State. And that's actually what my intention was. That's what I was like really trying to do was to you know, get to, and, and so it happened. And so for a while I wasn't doing um, meetings, you know, for several years, but um, what I learned about stating intentions, you know, just daily giving thanks and saying, um, you know, stating intentions for what you want, but doing it in a, a way so that you're, um, already, so you're speaking as if it's already happened. So in, instead of saying, um, you know, I, I want to be healthy. Mm -hmm. Well, that, that's, almost, you know, that's kind of like being a, a future. You want to be healthy. Now you say, uh, I intend, I am in perfect health or, you know, balanced or, or whatever you want to say. And you don't use things like you don't identify um, diseases. You you see everybody in their highest light. Um, and so, uh, yeah, the intentions that you state is just for the highest good of yourself, uh, the entire universe, and all beings everywhere. And so um, these meetings, it's a group of people that get together we go around in a circle well, there's food of, of up front of course that's how people gather right potluck okay. and so um and then we sit around we all say what we're grateful for and we state our intentions and ask that everybody in the group align with those intentions and those visions and then you end them all with um you know for the highest good of all of course and then you end it with um so be it and so it is and I'll tell you, it's so simple, but it is so unbelievably, it's a, it's, it's, a, it's like a miracle. Like everything it. is really happy. Everybody that is attending these intender meetings and stating these intentions, no matter how kind of like almost impossible they would seem, they're, they're happening and we're watching it. We're getting together every two weeks and we're watching these intentions happen because there's a group of so many others that are aligning with that and saying, yes, I want what's for your highest good. I want you to thrive. Yeah. I want me to thrive. I want us to be happy. I want, you know, all of this. And so it's, it's incredible and it's unbelievable. And, um, and it works. And so even if you don't have intenders meetings where you are or not able to host them and stuff, of course, that's a, you know, responsibility. Um, just saying daily intentions every day, name some things that you're grateful for. And especially if you write them down, because then you can go back and revisit them. But write, write down a few things that you're grateful for every day. And write down a few things that you intend for yourself, whether that be I, I intend I am happy, I intend I am healthy, or whether that be I uh, in, intend to meet Mr. Right or, you know, what, whatever it is that um, is your deepest heart's desire that as long as it's in alignment for your highest good, um, you keep stating those intentions as if they've already happened, especially. And they will happen. They will. Yeah. You don't even have to know like why or how. Um, and so that's one thing that I guess I would really encourage people to do. It's one of the highest and best things that you can do for yourself. Um, there you're, you're standing in your power. Um, you are your own sovereign being. You are participating and co-creating your reality. 
and you're doing it with the blessing of the universe and with all these you know loving souls that are are aligning and connecting with it so um those i really think something that simple is the best that you can do right now to create what you want yay well that's a perfect way to end our show i'm thankful grateful to have you on as as a as my guest today and i really look forward and intend to see you sooner than later thank you <laughs> i align with that <laughs> excellent excellent so be it um, so it is thank you thanks for tuning in and we'll see you all next week uh same time bye-bye sounds good bye-bye